Okay, today we're going to take a look at factoring out a binomial from an expression. All right, um, for this first example right here, um, if I'm going to factor out a binomial, I have to realize that when I factor things out, I factor them out from each individual term that happens to be in the polynomial. All right, so for instance, the 3x times the quantity x minus 7 is a term, and it is separated with that minus sign, then the other term that is in the expression is the 5 times the quantity x minus 7. So we have two terms that are in this polynomial expression right here. All right, I am going to factor out the greatest common factor. If I look at both terms, all right, I see that I have an x minus 7 in both of them, and that happens to be a binomial. All right, so I'm going to take that out as a binomial, x minus 7. All right, and then I need to ask myself, what's left? Now, depending on how complicated this is, you might want to go to square brackets. I'm just going to go ahead and use curvy brackets. All right, in this first term, when I take out the x minus 7, I am left with a 3x. All right, in the second term, when I take out the binomial x minus 7, I am left with a minus 5. Okay, so factoring out a binomial can look as simple as that. All right, now, if we step it up just a little bit, all right, in both of those terms, I only was able to take out one binomial. All right, looking at the second example, all right, again, I've got two terms. All right, so this term is 2x times the quantity x plus 5 raised to the third. All right, I know that's all one term because then there's my plus sign, and my second term then is 4 times the quantity x plus 5 squared. Okay, so I have two terms again. All right, now this time when I am looking at the binomials, all right, this binomial matches this binomial, okay, except I've got three of them here and I've got two of them here. So, and also looking at my coefficients there, I'm going to be able to take a greatest common factor out there. I could take two out of both of those. So you can take out the single numbers in front and you can take out binomial expressions more than one. All right, so my greatest common factor is going to be a two and then x plus 5 raised to the second power, okay? Now, I am going to go to square brackets here. All right, just like I said, I could have done square brackets over there, but I just chose not to. All right, now on this one, if I take out the 2 and I take out two binomials of the x plus 5, that means I'm still left with the x, and I have one binomial x plus 5 still left there in that term. All right, I've got 4. I factor out 2. That means I'm going to be left with the 2, and then x plus 5 raised to the second power, I've taken both of those out, so then I do not have anything there. Okay, and the only reason on this one I went to square brackets was because I foresaw, I could see that I was going to have a set of parentheses inside there, a little less confusing that way. All right, now sometimes when you take out a greatest common factor and it's saying out in front, the things that are left on the inside can be simplified a little bit. I can do some distributive property there to clean this up a little bit. I'm going to keep everything else the same, 2 and then times the quantity x plus 5 squared. I'm going to go ahead and keep that square bracket a little bit longer. Square that. x squared plus 5x plus 2. Okay, and then I could have went to curvy brackets because I have nothing else that can be simplified there. <clears throat> okay, so my factored form of that polynomial would look like that. All right, for this last example, um, again, I'm taking going to take out a greatest common factor that is consisting of a binomial, but looking at those um, coefficients there in front, I've got a 4 and an 8, so I can take out a 4 out of both of the terms. I've got an x squared and an x, and I can take that out as well. So my greatest common factor is going to be a 4 and an x, and then an x plus 2. All right, I'm going to go ahead and use the square brackets here on this one. I take out the 4 of this first term. I've got two x's, I take one out, I'm going to have one x left over. I take out the binomial, then that's all I have left in that first term. I'm going to bring down the minus sign. I'm going to take the 8, factor out the 4, that'll leave me with the 2. The x got factored out, and the x plus 2 also got factored out, so it only leaves me with the 2. All right, and then see on that one, I didn't necessarily need those square brackets. So if you want to clean it up a little bit and write a final answer as 4x, parentheses, x plus 2, x minus 2 might look a little bit neater without the square brackets because square brackets weren't needed. Okay, it really doesn't matter, square brackets, curvy brackets, either way you go, you're going to be fine. 
Okay, but three little examples of how to factor out a binomial. Um, simple ones like this will help and lead you into factor by grouping in like an Algebra 1 or an Algebra 2 class. A little more complicated binomials where you've got to maybe take out, you know, a binomial to the second or third power. All right, this is going to be more on the lines of like something that you would do algebraically in a Calculus 1 class. All right, so um, factoring out a binomial. Uh, thanks for watching. And um, if you like the video, go ahead and give me a like and subscribe to my channel too, please. Thanks.